Welcome to the At The Core Podcast. Join us for this episode as our host, Ed Ross, shares conversations, insights, and best practices from sales enablement and effectiveness leaders across the globe. All right, so what I hear you saying is that there, there, there are elements of branding, you know, there's a realization that things have shifted. Talk to me more about that shift itself. I believe that there is an old learning development framework. Okay. Old L and D, and then there's a new way to approach it. Okay. Tell me more about that. So, back in my Microsoft certified trainer days, Mm -hmm. people came to us for learning. Yes. Like I traveled to different companies, delivered courses all over the place, and a lot of times it was the HR person that was also taking orders from different functions in the organization saying, hey, my team needs to learn X. Okay. And they would shop around for a vendor, call my company, we would come over and we we would deliver that training. Okay. Today, more and more, an employee, a team member, they don't have to wait on their L&D department Mm, to, to deliver something to them because of technology. You know, it's just like when we're at home. When I need to learn something, that I need to do at home, Yes, I just Google it, right? Or go to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Or I call somebody in the family, it's like, how do you do this, yes. you know? Yeah. And the same thing is happening when it comes down to learning development. Team members no longer have to wait on L&D. They can find solutions for themselves. So I believe that a mind shift has to happen for L&D practitioners. Okay. And that mindset to me looks like this. Hey, I'm no longer the center of the universe. Right. The system that I maintain, my learning management system, is no longer the center of the universe. That doesn't mean it's going away. Okay. It just means that it's, it's, not, it's not on the same level that it used to be on. Mm-hmm. And we have to augment that with self-directed learning. So... Every company's got to approach this in a way that makes sense for them. Okay. And for us, I've got some things in mind that I'm have a plan down the road where if a team member is in the middle of his work day, yes, and he needs to learn something, and he pops on and he watches a TED talk, mm-hmm. or he watches a video on YouTube, or he reads an article, yes, that there's some kind of mechanism that captures that and adds that to his learner transcript. Mm. The reason that I think being able to capture that information is so important is because it can then lead to when Ed sits down to have a conversation with his manager, Yes. his manager can say, oh, I see that you've been learning a whole lot of stuff. Tell me about that. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's a part of his performance review and maybe it's a part of what gets him to the next level? Yes. In okay. terms in terms of, you know, promotions and things like that. But from the L and D perspective, we've got to create that mechanism, that ecosystem, that's the way I like to call it. Yes. Which means that I've got to be okay with not being the center of the universe anymore. Mm-hmm. And and that shift in thinking I think could be a challenge for a lot of people. I, I would agree. I think it's I th- it's, it's, it's a challenge for a couple of reasons. I would imagine there's a, an element of fear. Absolutely. Whenever we talk about change, we have to couple that with fear. There's the fear of the unknown. Yep. There's the fear of the known, right? All things are not unknown. There is, we've been there before, and that hurt a lot, right? Yeah. And there's the fear of, will it be received? Oftentimes, we hear these conversations about generational learning, mm-hmm. right? Boomers versus millennials. While there are elements of that that are very true, I also think that there are elements of it that apply across the board. Absolutely. And I'll give you an example. Our pastor back home says we are the generation who microwaves instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> right? I mean, that's that's who we are. Yeah. I love that. We no longer that. like peel, yeah. chop boil mash potatoes we buy something that is going to replicate mashed potatoes and we can no longer go through the process of 
boiling water, dumping in the flakes, yeah. adding milk, whatever your yeah. condiments are to, to make it the way you want. Yeah. We now take that bowl and stick it in the microwave because we can't wait the five minutes to get it done. We need it right here, right now. Not many people today, at least that I interact with, you know, go and dig out those old manuals, yeah. right? They'll, they'll, if they have them handy, they'll go to them. But like you said, they'll Google it. They'll YouTube it. You know, they'll wiki it. Yeah. There's so many. How do you see that blending into the learning space? First thing is, as a practitioner, for myself, I had to get straight in my own head about, okay, this new landscape is not anything to like push back against. Okay. Because you're not going to win that. This is coming. It's already here. You have to figure out for your organization, all right, what makes sense for us in terms of this new self-directed space that we're in? Okay. What makes sense for us in terms of this new technological space that we're in as it relates to learning and development? I believe to your question directly, it's about offering different types of things mm -hmm. so okay. that you can appeal to as many of your learners as possible. I have some people I know that are like me that will take the time to read through text and look at a job aid and take the time to go through a course that's 20 to 30 minutes long. Okay. And I know I have team members that don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's about making sure as much as you can, mm -hmm. you deliver in different modalities, yes. different ways, so that you can match how people learn, the differences in that, and then how they want to consume that learning. Right. And here's, here's another really important point, Ed, and this was a hard pill for me to swallow. Okay. We also have to be comfortable with we're not going to have 100% compliance. Now, when I, see, when I say compliance, I'm not saying uh, mandatory, hey, it's mandatory that you take this. What I mean is, regardless of what we do in learning development, not everybody's going to be bought in. And we have to be okay with that. I forgot where I read it, but the stat that I read was, you'll have about 85%. But, but what, are, what are some of the things that we also need to consider outside of the, the generational learning and that it needs to be in small chunks so that it's consumable. What, what, else, what else do you think some people are struggling with or, or perhaps missing? From an L&D perspective, it's about offering different things to your learners, okay. right? If Ed likes to consume small chunks, have something available in that form. Right. If people like videos have something in that form, make sure you have a system where you can capture that information. That's where a learning management system is important. Right. So I have a, a transcript of what you've done. Okay. And, and I think that's new, right, to, to many people because when the organization gives you an invest, gives you money to invest, a budget to invest, you've got to show ROI on that. Absolutely. And one of the statistics, the popular statistics, is showing the number of people that have completed it. So I imagine the pressure is coming from knowing that you have that, you're going to be held accountable to that. But what I hear you saying is that that number is probably 85%, not 100 Absolutely. Right? So right there we have a 15% delta that works in our favor if we know that only, a, even no matter what you do, only about 85% percent of the people are going to comply and subscribe. Absolutely. And I think if, if any of us, any of us think about, just think about your own company and the different personalities that you have and the different skill sets that you have in your organization. Okay. And just in your mind, just think about, okay, who would be hungry for this? Mm. Who does have a growth mindset and, and they want more, more learning because they're trying to get up to the next level? Or... They love what they do, and they're trying to be excellent at it. They're trying to reach mastery at it. Who are those people? Thank you for listening to today's At The Core episode. But don't stop there. Let's stay connected on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, where we share new episodes, content, and resources to help you enable your sales team to outperform the competition. 